Hey there, we're going to be talking in this lesson about the power of habits to create those small baby steps that are the actual secret to creating success. Success doesn't happen because of some magical stroke of genius. Success happens by taking consistent action over time. Those small steps that when they add up, create a giant leap. So let's look at what the stages are, the actual steps are in creating strong habits, in reinforcing what's known as the habit loop. So new habits take consistency in order for them to really form a lasting pattern in our brains. It doesn't happen because we decide it. It happens through the act of doing. Doing creates the habit not thinking about doing. So I don't want you to get stuck in thinking about doing. I want you to start doing. One of the first steps is to set your goal and know your why. We worked on that heavily in module one and two. Now in module three, we're going to take those goals and create the steps that are going to get us there. We're going to talk about the steps that you need to succeed. Number one, keep it simple. So remember, for that action to become a habit, it needs to be done on a consistent and regular schedule. It needs to be done consistently over a period of time. Usually three weeks is about the general time frame in which a habit becomes cemented, begins to be cemented. It's the start, it's not the finish, but it's the amount of time it takes to really be able to begin to relax into that habit. There are a couple of other things that you can do that will make it easy for that habit to stick. Here are what some of those ingredients are. Make it easy to get started. Collect the necessary things that you need to complete that routine or habit and have them already set up. Make yourself accountable. In other words, partner with a friend. You have easy inbuilt accountability here in the Painter's Path community. Take advantage of it. Set your goal. Know your why. That deep internal why is the driving force behind everything that you do. Know what your goal is, your big picture goal and your 90-day goal. What is it you plan to get accomplished? The thing, the one thing, at the end of 90 days. Keep that at top of mind. Then we're going to talk about the four steps that go into creating that habit loop. Let me share my screen here for a minute. And I've got a picture for us because I know, as y'all do as well, that most of us are visual learners and we are going to absorb it better by looking at that information. So the habit loop over here on the left side of the page is this circle. It starts right here. It starts with knowing your why, with knowing your goal. So that goal is critical. Knowing that goal is really crucial. The reason it's crucial is it's a desired outcome and we work best from that emotional desire. Like I said, you can know it, but until you feel it, it's not really gonna sink in. So goals are the desired outcome. That desire has to align with the habit that you're trying to create. Alignment's crucial. So then we're gonna create a strategy or a process that's gonna become a habit, otherwise known as a routine. Strategies are long-term plans of action. Processes are a set of routines, that, a set of actions that become a routine. So if we get this habit loop working and we work it correctly, then we're going to be able to set routines around those key pillars that are going to allow you to move forward and thrive as an artist. The first step in the habit loop is to create cues. Cues are triggers. Cues are things that alert you that the habit is about to start. So cues work the best 
when they're based on sensory information, when you can keep them based on those five senses on sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell, they're going to directly connect to your limbic system. And that will make the, the routine so much stronger. So establish cues that are linked to at least three, preferably all five of the senses, and you're going to be able to get started so much more easily. So establish cues. An example would be, as I go into the studio to work, one of my first cues is making coffee, making decaf coffee. It appeals to smell. As it's making and brewing, it appeals to smell and sound. I can hear the, the coffee pot gurgling. So I'm getting both a smell uh, trigger, smell cue, and a sound cue. Then I put on my apron, or I walk through the door into the studio and put on my apron. That appeals to touch. I can feel it. The texture of it feels different. The studio space is a different space than the rest of the house. It has a different visual impact. I've got things in here that visually cue me that it's, it's a painting time now. There's the easel with the painting sitting on it. All of those are visual cues. Then I like to listen to music while I'm working. Cueing up the music appeals to, again, the auditory sense. Cup of coffee in hand, I sip it and look at the previous day's work. That taste also is a trigger. It triggers memories in the past of pleasant studio experiences. And it reinforces that I'm now not in regular house time. I'm not gonna go work on the laundry. Now I'm in studio time. So create the cues that are gonna lead to the outcome that you desire. Appeal to as many of those senses as possible. The second step in the habit loop is routines. Routines happen when you build cues together and when you stack one habit on top of another. So the habit stacking is a phrase you may have heard before. It comes out of James Clear's book. But ha habit stacking refers to the idea that you take something that's already a routine habit and you put the new habit on top of it so that you begin to associate the new habit with something that you already do. I've had it stacked by doing the coffee and the music and painting together. Making coffee is a habit. Turning on music is a habit. Painting is a habit. I'm stacking them together. That's one of the tricks about using all five senses as cues is that almost inevitably, you've got different habits in there that are stacking one on top of another and reinforcing that new routine. Here comes the third step, and it's a really crucial one. And it's one, in fact, both of these bottom steps that you see here are ones that people frequently forget to do. They just take care of cue and routine, and they forget to go to rewards and reflection, and their habit falls apart. Rewarding yourself is super, super, super important. It's one of the things that reinforces the good behavior. I've trained animals, dogs, children, almost cats even. I taught my cat to fetch. Any one of those, we all work to the same, same system. Habits form the same way. So the habit loop is at its core, the good training loop, whether we're training ourselves or someone else. Positive reinforcement, which is what the reward system is based on taps into the way our brain actually works. We do not respond well to negative reinforcement. We respond well to positive reinforcement. It's true of all animals. So use positive reinforcement on yourself. Reward yourself for doing that behavior that you're trying to build. The reward can be small or it can be large. If you've got to write a blog post, for example, that you just really are having a hard time sitting down to, promise yourself that, that you're going to reward yourself with something simple at the end, like a walk around the block, a walk in the park, a cup of coffee, 
uh, maybe even a piece of chocolate, but some little reward. Even better if you can put that reward in alignment with the thing that you're hoping to accomplish, because that'll cement that habit even more strongly. So for example, when I'm doing a painting challenge or a new daily painting project, I like to reward myself at the end of the project with something that reinforces that painting habit, like a new tube of paint or a brush that I've been hankering after or a new painting knife. So think about aligning the reward. See, I've got alignment right here. Align that reward with the outcome. One of the reasons that works is that you get a dopamine hit when you reward yourself for creating that habit. Rewards create dopamine hits. That dopamine hit makes you feel good inside. Then your body wants more of that feel good stuff. And so it's more likely to continue that routine. Take advantage of that. The last step in the habit loop, and this is another one that people forget to do, is to reflect. It's to think about reflect, reflection and assessment. Reflection means you're looking at what worked, what didn't work, and tweaking your system, tweaking your process. And that reflection, that assessment can simply mean that you have created a habit tracker. You've got a little grid and you're just making a check mark every day that you actually follow through on that habit that you're trying to create. And guess what? You get another little dopamine hit when you do that. It's kind of a little reward. So if you're trying to create the habit of posting on social media every day, for example, and you've got a habit tracker and you've got a line there for posted on social media and you get to put a little check mark there, you're going to get a little mini dopamine hit. And it's more likely to come if you do that by hand on paper, pen, pencil on paper, than if you do it on the computer. So one of the things that I have here for you in a later lesson is a habit tracker, a really simple one that you can use. It's a monthly habit tracker. I strongly recommend that you not try to do it on the computer, not try to create one for yourself on a spreadsheet, unless it just really satisfies you and gives you that little mini dopamine hit, because I want you to be able to take advantage of that. I would recommend you print it out and that you give yourself that that pleasure of making a check mark on it. So take advantage of that. It again helps to reinforce and um, cement that habit loop. So remember to take advantage of all four of those steps in the habit loop. You need to create cues, use cues that appeal to the five senses stack those cues, habit stack to create routines. And you need to reward yourself every time you execute that and assess at the end of a period so that you can make sure you're actually doing it. So think of that as your own mini accountability. Like I said, we have accountability here in the group. Say you're gonna do something and then check back in with the group. It helps to make it sustainable. But you can do the same thing for yourself, whether you're in a group or not. Record it, journal, use a spreadsheet, use a check sheet, use a tracker. They're all kind of systems that work. Use the one that works for you. We're all different. And there is no one single assessment tracking system that's going to work for everybody. If it feels right, use it. If it feels wrong and it feels heavy, don't use it. Adjust it, switch to a different system, but get one. Use something in there because it really will make a huge difference. So next up, we're going to talk about the five pillars of a thriving art practice. And we're going to see where in that, that system, where in that framework, we need to focus on creating regular routines and where we have some that we need to establish one time and then periodically come back and visit. Happy painting. Look forward to talking with you in the next lesson.